Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. In the news this morning, Australia and New Zealand reaffirmed grants for USP. More child abuse cases reported. And tourism industry works on ideas to meet new demands. From the studios of FBC Suba. Australia and New Zealand have reaffirmed the payment of grants to the University of the South Pacific. USP Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Alualia says the Australian government had stopped payment of grants to USP since his suspension sorry, earlier in the year. However, Professor Alualia stresses that after meeting with the Australian partners, Australia has committed to releasing a payment of $7 million to USP. He says New Zealand has also reassured the university that it is fully committed to paying its grants to the institution and has even highlighted a possible increase. Following the seizure of grants from the Fijian government, Professor Alawalia stresses that the university is managing the situation on the payment of grants carefully on a daily basis. After my suspension, Australia wanted some, some guarantees. We have met all those triggers that they wanted and, uh, and they uh, met with us last week in our regular partnership meeting, have assured us that they will release 7 million. The 3.5 million that's outstanding from them will be released in October. The uplift from New Zealand will be 1.5 million is what they told us. University of the South Pacific Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Alualia has cleared the air on the reorganization of the institution. Professor Alualia stresses there are no job losses at the institution and the reorganization will allow USP to retain jobs in these very difficult circumstances. The VC says apart from COVID-19, there were other factors that has led to the reorganization of USP. However, with talks of a reorganization, the university has assured there will be no job losses could have done across the board uh, salary cuts to all staff. We've decided not to do that because we think that would be too disruptive to our staff. Anytime anyone speaks of a restructure or reorganization, immediately minds turn to jobs. And in this entire situation, we believe that the rights of our staff have been maintained and protected. The Ministry for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation says that cases of violence against children are increasing and getting more complicated. The comments were made during the Ministry's submission on the optional protocol to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child ratified by Fiji in 2005. Pranita Pakash reports 231 cases of child sexual abuse were recorded under the Ministry's mandatory reporting provisions last year. The increasing number of child exploitation and trafficking cases has prompted the ministry to reconsider its legislation. The ministry is uh, moving into, into securing this uh, protocol so that, uh, these are, that, so that we have mechanisms in place to safeguard uh, the children of Fiji. It's happening in our domestic front. The trafficking, the sin, uh, exploitation, sexual exploitation of, of our young children, of our children. And so in line with the changing uh, social issues and aspects, we need to be changing our legislation and we are working uh, towards that. The Fiji uh, Revenue and Customs Authority says they support the ratification of the convention. Trafficking is a form of modern day slavery um, and that Fiji's strategic position, not only geographically, um, but also influence in the region makes it even more important um, for us to support this. A report by End Child Prostitution and Trafficking International and Save the Children Fiji suggest that children in street situation result from urbanization and they are vulnerable to multiple forms of labor and sexual exploitation, including prostitution and trafficking. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. 95% of the Pacific Islands tourism sector has felt the brunt of the COVID-19 pandemic. The South Pacific Tourism Organization is now emphasizing on the need to diversify in an effort to meet new market demands. Chief Executive Christopher Crocker says they can implement effective responses following a grant of 42500 from the United States Embassy in Suva yesterday. Crocker says the economic resilience grants will ensure Fiji, Kiribati, Nauru, Tonga and Tuvalu strengthen their tourism connections with the U.S. market. 
uh, through this grant funding, Your Excellency, um, the SPTO and the Travel Foundation, which is um, NGO in this case, will be working collaboratively together to develop a practical toolkit um, to help the region's uh, SMEs adapt and connect success with the U.S. and other international markets. The Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation has recorded an influx of new registrations, particularly during this COVID-19 period. Executive Officer Victoria Yee confirms following the two surveys at mid-year, most businesses were found to be in survival mode during these uncertain times. She adds that a few businesses barely making ends meet and exhausting every avenue possible to ensure their workers are not made redundant. Uh, we know from the findings is uh, the big businesses are perhaps reducing uh, days, the medium are reducing hours, while the small uh, MSMEs have uh, uh, either made their workers redundant uh, as a means of survival, which is why now more than ever we are um, calling on non-members to come on board and just join FCF so that we are, can better represent the private sector at the national level. Nasolo villages in the province of Bua did not wait for the government's assistance to construct a new bridge. Turangani Korachone Boreta says youth in the village do not want to rely on the government to fund the project because of the current economic situation. Josai Nanunga reports. This is the bridge that the Nasolo Mbua natives have been wanting to build for the past 53 years. This is something we've been waiting for for a very long time. There have been incidents in the past such as students not attending classes, sick villages not being able to visit health facilities, especially during wet weather. It was also difficult to transport our agriculture products. Uranga Niyabusa Aisake Sobakiwai says the project was constructed through the hard work put up by villagers both young and old. It was the youth themselves, particularly young boys, who spearheaded the initiative. I was astonished to have witnessed youths and some from nearby villages work hand in hand to ensure this project is completed as soon as possible. Youth member Nirai Rogumbutini believes the bridge will improve accessibility for the students. Years of struggle to cross the river is no more. Even though I have left school, I believe my younger brothers and sister who still attended school will greatly benefit from this new development. A total of $18,800 was spent on the project. The money was fundraised by the community through various events. FBC News. Up ahead, Bonolangi guides in a scene to end 30-year drought. And Super Volleyball prepares for major tournaments. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The AMPS Industries Nasinu football side aims to end their court's inter-district championship 30-year drought. The last time Nasinu lifted the IDC trophy was back in 1990 when the current coach Tangi Bonolangi was playing. Bonolangi says winning the 2020 court's inter-district title at the ANJ Stadium will be a memorable one. It, it's going to be special, especially for uh, for me after being uh, because uh, since 1991 there's never been an IDC back in uh, at the stadium. Uh, I'm not sure a few years ago I had the was an IDC, and the, uh, so it's going to be a very special one. Uh, not in the ground, but sitting on the bench, guiding the same team that uh, I played for. Suva Netball Association Major Championships, USP Wave knows it will be tough defending their title during the weekly league competition. The competition, which began last month, continues this week with top teams like Lomai VP, CBM Sharks and Ablaze vying for top honor. USP Wave will be going the extra yard as they try to retain their title in the major division. It's um, quite tough actually, uh, given the past years it was an easy sale for us, but as the year goes past, uh, there's uh, more potential, more players coming in, which is uh, very hard to put our coin on which team will play this year. 
The Suva Volleyball Association has begun its preparation for the Fiji Volleyball Sanctioned Tournaments that commence at the end of the month. The association hosted a friendly tournament last Saturday with eight men's and five women's team at the LICI Multipurpose Court in Suva. Four new teams, brothers, Red Hill, Red Diamond and USP women have joined. Interim President Kamweli Nangama says the competition has been a success so far. So, um, they were all looking forward to, to things to ease up a bit uh, and the restriction uh, uplifted. Um, that's why we're having these so many number of teams coming forward. Clubs that have just uh, formed a um, few months back just because of the restriction are now coming on board to, be, uh, to join Super Volleyball. Yeah. Women's Pineapple Cup winner Cheryl Ma plans to give back to the sport of bowling when she stops playing. Ma is part of the national triples team that was to compete for the postponed World Outdoor Bowls Championship. Stamping her mark in the prestigious Pineapple Cup competition over the weekend at the Suva Bowling Club, Ma says next on the list is coaching. For me personally, I'm still looking to represent Fiji if I'm good enough. Uh, and um, just continue playing bowls and also try to um, get a coaching certificate so that I can help the new bowlers that are coming through. A trough of low pressure lies slow moving just to the west of Fiji and associated cloud and rain is expected to affect the country from later today. Meanwhile, a moist easterly wind flow prevails over the country. That is your FBC Morning News. Join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. Remember, in times of crisis, you need factual news that you can trust. Stop believing fake news about the COVID-19 on social media. Fight means information by getting only the facts about the coronavirus from verified news sources like FBC's TV, radio and digital media news. FBCnews.com.fj, keeping Fijians connected with the truth. Radio Fiji One, Nandomo Iviti.